You are now listening to episode 11 of the Real Health Podcast with Dr. Taylor Crick. In this episode, we're covering the toxic top 10 ingredients in personal care products and find out why you should stop using them. And now, Dr. Taylor Crick. All right, welcome to the Real Health Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Dr. Taylor Crick, coming to you this week talking about toxicity. So if you listened to our last couple podcasts, we've been on this topic of toxicity and how your body is a toxic waste bucket. So if you haven't heard that, make sure you go back into the archives and listen to that one first, your body as a toxic waste bucket. And so you can learn that there are two steps to effectively detoxify, uh, stop filling your bucket up, and also dump your bucket. But today I want to do a special focus on toxicity on personal care products. Last week we talked about the top tox- the toxic top five everyday products, so the things that we're exposed to every day that can be a big concern. And one of those top, top five was household products, and that included things like cleaners, uh, that included things like you know stuff in your air or mold, uh, household, or rather it's household products, so not mold, but things, uh, paint in your basement, varnish, you know, cans of chemicals that are in your house that are making your home more toxic. But also another thing with household products is our personal care products. And this is, you know, a massive, massive concern because they've found that personal care products, and especially women, women apply an average of 168 chemicals per day through their personal care products. So that is quite a bit. You know, there's over 80,000 chemicals that are in our environment now that have not been tested for their for their safety. There's over 13,000 chemicals, though, that are used in cosmetics. So what we're going to go through today are the toxic top 10 for personal care products. What are the top 10 most toxic products so that we can look out for those, or top, most toxic ingredients, rather, so that we can flip over our label and read and see what's on there, pick these things out and find them. So if you're joining the podcast for the first time, my name is Dr. Taylor Crick. I am a local wellness doctor, maximized living chiropractor in Salt Lake City. And what we do in our office to help people get well and get healthy is teach them five essentials. And our fifth essential is toxicity. The first one is your mindset, changing the way that you think about your health, minimizing stress, maximizing your time management, or maximizing your relationships too. Number two is your nerve supply, maximizing your nerve supply. So this is the most important thing. This is how the body has been designed to heal and function is via the nerve supply and the nervous system that comes from the brain. That's what tells your heart to beat. That's what tells your lungs to breathe. That's what tells your digestive system to work. That's even what tells your liver to detoxify. So if your liver, you know, if there's nerve interference to your liver, that's like having an air purifier in your home and not having it plugged in. Do you get that? So that would be pointless to not have that thing plugged in. So you have to check the nerve supply, make sure that you check the spine for nerve interference, and that should be something that's constantly addressed throughout your lifetime. Essential number three is maximizing your nutrients and your nutrition and the foods that you put in. We talk all the time about eating foods by God versus foods by man, and how foods by man can make you more toxic. Foods by God, foods that were put here on the earth, can make your body less toxic, help your body stimulate natural detox. Essential number five is, or four, excuse me, is exercise. Exercise, uh, maximizing your oxygen and your lean muscle mass and exercising vigorously. And that's one of the things that we look at when we look at toxicity uh, is, you know, exercising helps your body detox because you can detox three ways through your sweat, like from exercise, through your urine, or through your feces. And so exercising is essential and not just walking, even though movement is good, stimulates the lymph system, stimulates your joints, stimulates your brain, stimulates pretty much everything. But exercising vigorously and actually working up a sweat uh, can help your body detox even more. But essential number five is minimize your exposures to toxins. So go back, listen to some of the past podcasts, get familiar with these other four essentials. But today what we're talking about our personal care products, which ones to avoid, what ingredients you want to look for. So the reason that this is so important, like I said before, that women apply an average 
of 168 chemicals a day. And that's crazy, you know, and that's, that's women in general. The ones that do it the most are teenagers. And when they tested 20 teenage girls, they applied an average of 17 products a day with a total of 174 ingredients. So when we talk about when we talk about number of exposures to toxins, you know, a lot of these things are such small exposures that they can pass a, as safe. But when you're constantly exposing the body to these things, that's how your toxic bucket fills up. So if you're applying 174 chemicals to your skin every day, your toxic bucket can fill up really quickly. So you have to look at what these, are, where these are coming from. These are your soaps, your shampoos, your deodorants, your lotions, your creams, your makeups. And when they look at this, you know, it's not just in our bodies that they've tested this and found that these are in here. One of them that we're going to talk about, parabens, you know, they studied 40 women's breast cancer tumors, and they found parabens present in 99%. And then many of the women, they had all five varieties of parabens. There's five different types of parabens. That's one that's linked heavily to cancer that we're going to talk about today. But they found those within the tumor. Uh, Another study, a 2005 study, tested umbilical cords of babies found an average of 200 industrial chemicals. So that's why this is such a big concern. Go back and listen to Are You a Toxic Waste Bucket to learn more about the stats of what's causing us to be so toxic. But when we look at personal care products, we're going to go through 10 things that you want to look for and you want to avoid and find on your ingredients list. Okay, And so three of them I'm going to say are the biggest, the big three, okay? And so I'm going to go through all 10 of these right now, then we'll talk about them. Number one is parabens, okay? So you want to look out for parabens. Number two is phthalates. So parabens and phthalates together are the two most dangerous. And you could switch those back and forth between one and two. They're both equally as dangerous, in my opinion, and they are the two worst. Uh, The next one is sodium lauryl sulfate. Okay, so sodium lauryl and sodium laureth sulfate will be found on as SLS sometimes or SLES on your ingredients list. Uh, but sodium lauryl and laureth sulfate, that's number three. Number four is triclosins. Uh, triclosins is antibacterial. We're going to talk about that one. Number five, propylene glycol, butylene glycol, polyethylene glycol. So the glycol families, you can look for that word glycol on your ingredients list. Number six is DEA. MEA and TEA. So occasionally it will be on your label as those things, but it's also the bigger names diethanolamine, monoethanolamine, and triethanolamine. Okay, so that's going to be tough for a lot of people to pick out. And that's why we're going through this too is because, you know, a lot of these if you flip over the label for the mo- for the average lay person, it's going to look like anything else. You know, it's going to look like a a chemical cocktail that you have no idea what any of those words mean. That's number six. Number seven is dioxins. That one's weird because it won't appear in the ingredients label oftentimes, but number seven is dioxins. Number eight, number eight is that benzoyl peroxide. So if you've used an acne product, you may recognize that. Number nine is what's called DMDM hydantoin and urea. Okay, so it could be on there as urea. And number 10 are your pigments, your colors, your F, D, and C, coal tar, color, and pigments. Okay, so we're going to talk about those. But the big three, we're going to go through those first and spend really, you know, the most time on these. Parabens are number one. So parabens, you can find them on your label as methylparaben, butylparaben, ethylparaben, and propylparaben, okay? So they're used as a preservative, and they're not always on the label, though. That's the thing, is when they tested over 25,000 products, they found parabens in over 10,000 of these products. Parabens can make a product smooth. So anything that goes on your skin smoothly, like a shampoo, like a conditioner, like a lotion, something that is smooth on your skin will likely have parabens in it, okay? And so the reason that this is a big concern is that it's been found in breast cancer tumors, like we talked about. It may contribute to sterility in males, and it leads to hormone imbalance. That's what's happening with a lot of these chemicals that we're talking about, is the reason that they're known carcinogens, the reason that they're known 
hormone disruptors is because they alter your hormones. They can mimic estrogen. But by altering your hormones, altering your hormones leads to an increased risk of breast cancer. So that's how the mechanism by which parabens and some of these other chemicals can increase your risk of breast cancer. Okay, so parabens is the first one. That is the biggest one that you want to look for. They're also linked to uh, neurotoxicity, skin irritations, things like that. But the skin irritations, you know, with a lot of these chemicals, that's the, the least of our concerns. The bigger concerns are the things like endocrine disruption, cancer, reproductive complications. So you got to watch out for parabens. You got to make sure that you're not applying parabens. They've also uh, been shown to, to stimulate early puberty. Okay, so that's when, you know, girls will start puberty early because their estrogen is so messed up and so out of whack. And one of the reasons why is because these personal care products that they've been using since they were born, you know, shampoos and soaps and lotions and things. So number one is parabens. Number two is phthalates. So that's found in many products, but usually not listed on the labels. So that's why it's so important to just find a brand that you trust or find a store that you trust or look for a label that says no parabens, no phthalates. Another thing that I'm going to put in the show notes for today is a YouTube video that we've done of how to choose the best personal care products. You know, you can find a store that you like, you can find a brand that you like, or you can look for these keywords because it will say no parabens, no phthalates. But a lot of times these are not listed on the label. But the health effects include damage to the liver and the kidneys, the detoxing organs, so incredibly toxic, can lead to birth defects can lead to decreased sperm counts in men and early breast development in girls and boys. Okay, and so in girls and boys. Okay, so you heard that early breast development in girls and boys because it impacts the hormones so badly. And phthalates are the ones that have been found in umbilical cord samples. They've been found in breast milk samples when they've tested women's breast milk. They'll have these these chemicals in there called phthalates. And what they do is they result in what's called feminization of boys. Okay, so feminization of boys that shortens certain anatomical landmarks. Uh, You can use your imagination there, but it, it, you know, it's a mutation and it causes uh, feminization in boys because the hormones are so disrupted, also breast development in boys. Phthalates have also been shown to increase the proliferation or the growth rate of breast cancer tumor cells. So that's number two, that is phthalates. Number three is going to be sodium lauryl sulfate and sodium laureth sulfate. So you want to look for that word sulfate. These sulfates are harsh, and they're used in car washes, garage floor cleaners, degreasers. They're degreasers. They break down grease. They're also sudsers. So anything that suds is, you know, practically every soap, every shampoo, every toothpaste on the market. And, you know, they've found toxic residual levels when they've tested heart tissue, liver tissue, lung tissue, and brain tissue that they have sodium lauryl and sodium laureth sulfate. It's in 90% of personal care products that have anything that foams, anything that's going to suds up or foam up. It can also lead to things like eye damage, depression, breathing issues, diarrhea, skin irritation, and even, you know, eventual death. So you want to watch out for sodium lauryl sulfate and sodium laureth sulfate. I want to stop after these first three and just talk about them really quickly because the reason that the first three are a concern is that they're in nearly everything, okay? So when they test these personal care products, they find these three are the most common. So when we talk about our exposures, it might not be that these are necessarily the most dangerous of all the toxic top 10 that we're going to talk about today, but these are the ones that you're getting the most exposures from. And so that's why you have to check your labels, you have to check your lotions, you have to check your soaps. And this is a quick and easy fix. You know, you can toss this stuff in the garbage. You can go out to a store like Sprouts, a store like Whole Foods, or a grocery store in your area that you trust, go out and find clean products. And, you know, then you're done. You're not, you're not continuing to expose yourself, your kids, your family. So this is a quick and easy fix. But I want to show you an example or talk about an example here that, uh, that you know, always bothers me, that this is something that our patients always say. So our patients in our office, we have what's called a, a toxicity toilet. And it's an actual toilet where patients bring in their toxic products and they throw them in the toxicity toilet 
when they're going to get rid of them. So one of the ones that somebody brought in at one point was called Cetaphil. So a lot of you may have heard of this. It's Cetaphil, C-E-T-A-P-H-I-L. It is the number one dermatologist recommended lotion. It's a gentle skin cleanser, it says. Mild, non-irritating, softens as it cleans. Okay, sounds good, right? And it's the number one dermatologist recommended. But when you flip it over and you look at the ingredients, here's what's in it. You know, we haven't gotten to propylene glycol yet. That's number five, so we'll be there in a minute. But here's the ingredients. Water, cetyl alcohol, propylene glycol, one of the toxic top five, sodium lauryl sulfate, the one that we just talked about, sterile alcohol, then there's methylparaben, propylparaben, and butylparaben. Right there on the label, and this is the number one dermatologist recommended. It's, it's fragrance-free, so that's a lot of times what phthalates will be in is in your fragrances. Anything labeled perfume or parfume or just labeled as fragrance is a lot of times where you'll find phthalates. So I don't think that this one has phthalates, but other than that, it pretty much has the toxic top five right in there. So that's crazy, and this is the number one dermatologist recommended. So you can't ask your doctor oftentimes, you know, unless you have a good one, you can't ask them about toxic products because they'll brush you off and laugh it off and say, oh, that has nothing to do with the fact that, you know, 23.5 million people now have autoimmune conditions in our country and breast cancer is expected to rise 50% by 2030. And, you know, these, all these, all these hormone disrupting chemicals are linked to it. So you got to do your research. You got to find the good solutions because the recommendations that you're getting oftentimes aren't good. That one breaks my heart. We have patients say all the time, that's the one that I use because my doctor told me. And we say, oh my gosh, that's just crazy. So let's go on with the toxic top 10 and finish these out with the last six. The next one is called triclosin. So uh, triclosins or triclosins, I've heard it said, but that's an antibacterial ingredient and it's a synthetic. So that is something that, you know, you got to look out for. Anything that says antibacterial will typically have triclosins, antibacterial soap, antibacterial, you know, hand wash, you know, especially the ones that you don't require water for. These are everywhere, anything that's antibacterial, triclosins. And the EPA has it registered as a pesticide because it poses risks to human health and to the environment. Um, and it's also, you know, classified as a chlorophenol. That's what type of chemical it is. That's the, the, the chemical makeup of it. And those chemicals, that group of chemicals is suspected of causing cancer in humans. So you want to watch out for triclosins. You want to watch out for things that say antibacterial. The next one is propylene glycol. So propylene glycol, we're also going to include in that butylene glycol and also polyethylene glycol, which sometimes can be on there as PEG. And that's made from propylene glycol. So you got to watch out for this one. It's in a lot of petroleum plastics. In a lot of your plastics, it's a plasticizer. Uh, the EPA considers it so toxic, it requires gloves, clothing, and goggles to dispose it by burying it. And the EPA warns against skin contact because it, to prevent brain, liver, and kidney abnormalities. But this is a big ingredient found in antifreeze and hydraulic fluids. Um, it's also found in your food supply processed foods will have propylene glycol. You can flip it over on your processed food labels and find this, this antifreeze ingredient in your foods. Uh, also found in childhood vaccinations, so used as a, uh, as a preservative in childhood vaccinations, which is crazy. Cosmetics, of course, toothpastes, shampoos, deodorants, so propylene glycol big in deodorants, lotions, um, and, and like I said, processed food, so in the food supply sometimes. It's linked to kidney damage, linked to liver abnormalities, li linked to skin cell growth inhibition, so it stops the growth of new skin cells, immune system deficiency, and central nervous depression. The other one that I mentioned is PEG, and that's been found, you know, there's been dangerous levels of dioxins that are found as a byproduct of how they make that from propylene glycol. So dioxins, we're going to get to at number seven down here, but PEGs are in everything from your personal care products to your baby care products and your sunscreens, okay? And when we talk about your body as a toxic bucket, you know, a baby's bucket is what then, you know, a solo cup. So you do not want to be filling your baby's bucket from its food supply or from the things that you're putting on its skin. I have, you know, I have 10-month-old twins. We are very, very careful of the plastics that they play with 
and the things that go on their skin. We're not, you know, paranoid parents at all. We let them roll in the dirt and we, you know, we're not like hygienic or, or anything like uh, antibacterial, anything like that. But we're very careful of the hormone disruptors that they're allowed to play with because we know that these build up. So that is number five, the glycol family. Watch out for those. Number six is the ethanolamine family. So that's going to be hard for you to find. You know, look in the show notes to see how it's spelled because once you've seen these words, you'll be able to recognize them better. But sometimes it'll be on there as DEA, MEA, or TEA. So then you're, you're getting lucky if they've labeled it well because you can actually find them. Uh, this is found in over 600 home and personal care products, you know, things like soaps, lotions, co- cosmetics, buzz, bubble baths, laundry, and dishwashing detergents. It's found to produce cancer in animals. It's a foam booster, okay? So it's another foaming agent. And it's a skin eye irritant, and it causes contact dermatitis too. So, you know, it, it affects the skin on the outside. Bad sign of what it's doing on the inside. It's easily absorbed through the skin, and it begins to accumulate in the body, organs, and the brain. Okay, so a lot of these toxins are fat-soluble toxins. So that's where they accumulate is in your fat cells. Make it, A, hard for you to lose weight, but also just hard for your body to detoxify, for it to really perform every function as the cells get more toxic, the fat cells get more toxic. So that's number six, DEA, MEA, TEA. Dioxins is number seven. Dioxins is something that won't appear in the ingredients. A lot of these dioxins come from reactions, like we talked about with the glycols, making propylene glycol into polyethylene glycol. Uh, But it's in antibacterial ingredients like triclosins. It's within triclosins, number four. It's in different emulsifiers. It's in PEGs, like we already talked about, and other cleansers like sodium lauryl and sodium laureth sulfate. So it's because of the way that these are made that dioxins are released as a byproduct. So they're not an actual ingredient. They're never going to be on the ingredient list. But dioxins cause cancer. That's a known fact. Uh, DDT is a dioxin. Dioxins cause cancer. They reduce your immune system. They cause nervous system disorders. They cause miscarriages. And they cause birth deformities. Okay, so you definitely do not want to be around dioxins and with all these other ingredients like we've already talked about that cause all these harmful effects. This is a side effect of a byproduct of those chemicals and those ingredients being made. Number eight, number eight is benzoyl peroxide. So this is, you'll see this in a lot of your acne products and the MSDS even states that it's a possible tumor promoter. Uh, It may act as a mutagen, so that means that it mutates DNA and leads to DNA damage in humans and other mammals. You know, they've tested it in other mammals and found that it produces DNA damage. This is benzoyl peroxide. It's also toxic by by inhalation, and it can irritate your eyes or your skins or your skin or your respiratory tract. But the biggest thing is what is it doing inside of your body? It's damaging your DNA. Number eight, benzoyl peroxide. Number nine are two preservatives called DMDM Hydantoin. So that's capital D, capital M, capital D, capital M, Hydantoin. So it's just a weird word that you have to look for. Check the show notes so you can see how to spell it. And the other one is urea, which is, you know, can also be on there as Im- imidazolidinyl. You know, I, I don't know how to pronounce that one. You have to read it and look for it on your ingredient list. But those are two preservatives that they release formaldehyde, okay? So formaldehyde can cause joint pain, can cause cancer, can cause skin reactions, allergies, depression, headaches, chest pains, ear infections, chronic fatigue, dizziness, or insomnia. So you want to look out for those. Those are on your makeups and on your personal care products, DMDM, Hydantoin, and urea. Number 10, the last one we're going to talk about are your color pigments, your synthetic colors from coal tar, F, D, and C, color and pigments. Okay, so these contain heavy metal salts that deposit toxins in the skin, causing skin sensitivity and irritation. And when they are absorbed into the body, it can actually cause depletion of oxygen. So they actually limit how much oxygen you're able to uptake and and depletes your oxygen can even lead to death at certain levels. Animal studies have shown that almost all these t- coal tar color pigments, almost all these are carcinogenic. So you want to stay away from the FD&C 
color, and pigments. So what can you do to avoid these things? You know, first off, you know, when we're talking about makeups and, and pigments here, uh, an easy transition is, you know, like a lot of mineral makeups don't use a lot of these toxins. So you can find a reputable brand. Find a brand that you trust and do your research. Find out if this brand is trustworthy and find out exactly why and how much care they put into their products. You know, a lot of these products, they won't test them on animals. So, you know, that's a good step, but what are you putting in it still? You know, and, and that's an important step. I do believe that, you know, that's uh, uh, something that's important in the personal care product industry, but what are you putting in them is way more important, and it's way less regulated, so they can get away with a lot. So find a brand that you like, find a store that you like, you know, a good, healthy, clean store isn't going to have all these name brands, all the conventional brands to distract you. You're only going to be able to get good options. But the last thing is the best resource when it comes to this. And we've talked about this in past episodes. We talk about this at our workshops. We talk about this on our YouTube videos is the Environmental Working Group, their Skin Deep Database. Okay, so the Skin Deep Database, if you go to www.ewg.org backslash skin deep. Okay, so skin deep as in beauty is only skin deep. Uh, But what they've done is they've tested over 25,000 products and given them each a grade, an overall grade, and even a grade on each of the ingredients. So like one, for example, is Lysol Power and Free Bathroom Cleaner with a scent of cool spring breeze. Okay, so a lot of these scents, you know, have phthalates, have different things in them in the fragrances. But this is a power and bathroom cleaner that, you know, I was surprised that the EWG gave it a B. You know, I would never use it in my house personally. You can use homemade products easily that have no chemicals in them. But even I was surprised to find out that the EWG gave it a rating of a B. So A, B, C, D, F, like like your school. Uh, B is passing grade. It's pretty good. But some of the other ingredients, you know, it has dipropylene glycol butyl ether. Okay, so that's one of the ones we just talked about, dipropylene glycol. Some concerns are cancer. That ingredient only ranks as a C. So C is still a passing grade. So this might be a little bit too lenient. You know, I don't pass something that's been shown to cause cancer, developmental endocrine reproductive effects, damage to DNA, nervous system effects, digestive system effects, damage to your vision. Those are the things that it's linked to. Another ingredient down here is fragrance. That got a D. Okay, so the concerns with that, with fragrance, are that there are phthalates and, you know, that cool spring breeze, they didn't go to a cool spring and capture that fragrance and bring it and put it into your bathroom cleaner. They've made that chemically, and those are the things that disrupt it. That got a D, so that's still, you know, something that I would put in the F category. So be careful, look at these ingredients, but go to the Skin Deep database. You can type in any of your personal care products, your household and cleaning products, your... Uh, your skincare products is at the Skin Deep database. That's like lotions. That's like shampoos. That's like soaps. Uh, so all of that is on environmental working group. And this is actually, excuse me, that, that last one came from their household and cleaning guide. So there's two. That's not the Skin Deep database. But you can find a lot of their databases on there. This is the EWG's guide to healthy cleaning. But the other one on there is the Skin Deep database where you could type in, you know, I use... Uh, I don't, but you could say I use Vaseline uh, Silky and Smooth Lotion or whatever the the name is. You can type that in and see what ingredients are are on there, see what the concerns are, and see if that's something that you want to toss out right now. But this is incredibly important that you know where these toxins are coming from so that you can stop filling your bucket. So do your research, look at your products. The other thing that I want to encourage you to do is listen to past podcast episodes. We have a lot of information already on the channel. All these episodes are power-packed full of health information. And if you listen to all these and you start to implement them into your lives, you're going to start to notice your health and your life changing and transforming. So make sure that you go to the show notes. Make sure that you follow some of the links. Make sure that you follow us on Instagram at Real Health Doctor. Also on Twitter, you can follow us, you know, sign up for our newsletter at Align Utah. Find us at Align Utah on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook. Uh, We put a newsletter out with events that are happening in the Salt Lake area. uh, And 
Just make sure that you click on the links and stay engaged, stay involved, keep learning about real health. So it's something that you can not only you know learn about, but it's something that you can experience. And that's our goal for each and every person. So stay tuned. Next week we're going to put out the tox or the uh, yeah the tox and detox natural ways to detox workshop that we're having in our office. So seating is filled up for that, but we're going to be hosting that in our office and then we're going to put the recording online. That's going to have everything for how to stay non-toxic and also how to detox naturally. So stay tuned for that. As always, I'm your host, Dr. Taylor Crick, tuning out Real Health Podcast. Talk to you guys next week. Thank you for listening to the Real Health Podcast with Dr. Taylor Crick. This episode has been sponsored by realhealthresource.com, your go-to resource for everything health, nutrition, and wellness. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and of course, please visit our website at realhealthresource.com.